Good day friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and I am back with another awesome Tinkercad tutorial. Friends, today we're going to make an awesome part to help close my swimming pool. So let's get cracking. So if you've never closed a pool, you need to blow air through the lines so they don't freeze here in Michigan. So I'm going to try and keep this quick for you. I wanted to blow air through this with my air compressor, but I needed to create the part that let me connect it. And then I want to be able to walk away. So I wanted this to be snug, which as you can see, I failed. So I'm working on version three, but I do have it threading well. And this was through the help of somebody on Thingiverse. And then I modded it on Tinkercad. Let me give that person credit and show you how it works. So step one was to visit Thingiverse and I typed quarter inch female adapter and that's where I found this which was perfect for what I was doing. Always check their notes. This user mentioned that the 0.5 inch was better. So I went right here and I downloaded this. I also double checked the license and since it had creative commons attribution that means I can use it as long as I give them credit. So I want to say thanks again to Manomite for their awesome creation. So friends, here we are in Tinkercad and this is the part I assembled. Now, of course I did import so I could grab their part. If I open my downloads, this is what they gave me. Here are the ones I've already printed. So when you import this, keep the measurements because they showed you that they were perfect. And then this is the part that arrived. Now I'm gonna start by rotating it so that we've got the end that was actually connected. This is important because this has the thread that lets it enter. You don't want to do that upside down or it'll be harder to thread. Now, as you can see, I got rid of this big chunk here and I got rid of the bottom. Let me show you how easy that is to do. So when you bring out a cube, you can line it up, lower it down and find the exact spot where that is. And then I just stretched that hole to the size that I wanted to eliminate. It's fine to have it go past. You do need to make sure that it does go past. And then when we take those two shapes and group them, which is control G, or you can click that button. After a moment, you will see that you cut that part flush. If you want it to be a little more flush, see how I've got part of a thread. This is kind of cool. You can double click. I'm going to change my nudge to 0.25. I'm going to hide my note. That's a note for how big the next piece I build has to be. That's going to be a little bit more clean. When I click, it regroups and cuts, and that's what I wanted. The next trim I did was pretty slick. I'm going to share it with you real quick. There is a special box called the soft box. When you bring it out, you can change its parameters. I did something like 36 and 36. I'm going to drop this down to the work plane by hitting D to drop. So that way we know we're high enough. I'm going to make that a hole and then watch this. If I make the walls seven, it instantly fills in. So it's going to cut that shape and not use as much of the plastic. Instead of seven, I'm going to try eight. And I'm just trying to find the size that I think is going to be strong. I'm going to change that to 8.5. Notice if you ever stretch these, it breaks it. So that's why I'm typing numbers instead of dragging handles. At this point, I'm going to grab those two. I'll do a line. I want to choose middle and middle just so I'm sure it's lined up. I love that. And I'm going to hit group. And friends, we have just created the part that goes up here on top. Now I wanted it at an angle so it was easier to connect my hose. So I changed it to 45 degrees and then I just attached it to two parts I built. Let me show you how I built those. So friends, for this, I'm going to ungroup my old part. And I'm going to do control D, which is duplicate and use shift nudge to move the new one over here. I'm going to ungroup all these to show you how I built them. So notice when I do ungroup, I've got this top piece where there are two half circles with a chunk cut out of them. I'm going to hide that for a moment and check this out. It is a cone. Now this is what I'm going to modify. I want to make it a lot longer. So instead of the height of 20, I'm going to go 50. Notice that stretches it out. And then I also found out that I need to have 36 for my top number. This 19.5 should have given me 39, but it's not coming out that large. So I'm going to bump it all the way up to 20.5 and see if that does it. I'm going to change my base radius to 18 and press enter. For a moment, I'm going to hide this. And then I'm going to take this and change it to 50 as well. So I'm going to keep these measurements the same because that way the walls will be thicker. If I do show all, I got to hide this because it came back. 
but you can see now I've got the same shape, but it's a little wider up here at the top. Plan is for this to slide in like a cork. I think I'm actually gonna take this bottom one and make it 19, so it's even a little wider. I have no problem with that bottom hole. Let's grab those two and let's group them so we can see that part. When we do show all, you can see our other part is hiding underneath. I wanna put it on top, check out this trick. We're gonna put the work plane up here where we want that piece to sit. We're gonna hide this so we can see the part. And friends, when you click it and do D to drop, it jumps to the top. If we do show all, you can see that fits pretty nifty. There is a little gap around it. I don't care, that's not gonna affect the part at all. Friends, I'm gonna attach this part real quick. Let's do shift select, so I've grabbed those two. I'm gonna do a line and make this bubble the boss. And I wanna get it centered and centered and to the top. And now I'm just gonna nudge it into the place that I want. So I'm pulling it out with the arrow keys, doing some control up so it raises up, and just getting it so that I think it lines up pretty darn sweet, just with control up and the arrow keys. That is pretty close. Let's see if I can just move it out a little further. And then I'm gonna check it from this side to make sure it's aligned. So I'm doing shift select, doing a line, clicking the bubble and making sure it's still in the middle. If I hide this one underneath, let's orbit under. You can see that that is pretty close to the face of the design. You can see here we are running into the bubble though. So it's good that we did a double check here. I'm gonna do control up until that pokes through. And now those threads are not running into anything. So we have got a clean area going through that. That is important that we double check that. Let's do show all and check all our alignment. Friends, we have just built a part using some cool piece that another person created, the ability to cut using Tinkercad holes. All right, friends, notice I've got a tiny thread poking out of here that I didn't see. Let's fix that by ungrouping. And I'm going to ungroup this part. And see how this is so far above? We are just gonna do on this work plane. So I wanna make sure I'm on this plane right here. Control down to push that through so I'm sure it's gonna cut the whole thing. So let's do shift select to grab those two parts and regroup them. And now I'm gonna grab all those pieces and we're gonna regroup them again. I'm gonna put my work plane back to the ground while we wait for it to fuse. That looks a lot better. I'm gonna hit T for transparency so it looks like a solid. I am happy with that and friends, we are ready to send it to the printer. Looks like those seams are gonna be thick enough for it to be sturdy. Let's hit export. Let's choose STL and I'm gonna save it as pool part version three. All right, friends, let's bring it into Kira. There it has loaded. I am gonna print, it's gonna take about an hour. I am gonna modify my settings just a tiny bit. I wanna make sure that this is a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna do wall thickness of 1.2, and then I want my infill to be 30%. That looks pretty darn decent. I'm gonna hit print, and I'll be able to test this in about an hour or so. So friends, remember the point of this video was how cool it is to bring in a part from Thingiverse for something you do not want to create. When the threads are already available to me, why recreate the wheel? And then you get to have fun creating something that you're going to find useful. Friends, of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, if you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know with this brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.